Hi guys, it's that time of year where things are going a little bit spooky around here and we're going to paint some cute and slightly creepy illustrations for Halloween. So grab your paintbrushes and let's get going. Right everyone, it's Halloween time and it means we've got another set of cute little bullet journal illustrations for you. So I'm just going to draw myself a little line work out where I'm putting my little pieces and let's go. So I'm going to start off with a witch's hat. So I like to draw mine in pencil first because it just means I get a bit more of a clear guide. So my witch's hat is a little bit crinkled. We might make it a bit broader. There we go. Bit of a buckle in the middle. It's a bit more like the sorting hat I suppose. Then we're going to have, uh, let's have a ghost I think. A little floating ghost. So I'm going to do mine with a little tail like that and two little arms going boo, circle for a mouth and then I do two little kidney beans for eyes. <laughs> Right, next up, let's have a cauldron of trick-or-treat candy corn. Now, as, a, as an English person, I didn't really know anything about candy corn. Um, is it nice? Is it, is it something you guys actually like? I, mean, I assume it's an American thing. Um, but yeah, do we get it over here? I don't know. So to create my cauldron, it's just a series of curves and then a little handle and we can fill that all out in a bit. <laughs> then we're going to have a witch's cat. Now I'm going to draw my cat, let's have them a bit smaller, sort of sat and looking off to one side. So I do a sort of funny shapes like this and soon you should be able to see where I'm coming from. him look rather jolly and then we'll finish off with a little pumpkin. Now if you haven't already seen I've actually done a whole pumpkin tutorial but but more for when pumpkins were nice and autumnal and they weren't all spooky. So do go and have a little look at how we shape and draw a pumpkin that hasn't been possessed. So let's get a carved face in this guy. I mean, gosh, there are just so many amazing artworks going on these days with carved pumpkins, but I'm keeping mine fairly simple. Okay, so that is five drawn shapes. And what I'm gonna do now is give them a little bit of a rub out. So I've just got the faint pencil there and then we can get started with the painting. Our pencil is now very faint and rubbed out and I'm going to start with my witch's hat. I'm going to place in a little belt and buckle um, in a nice sort of purple colour and what I'm doing to start off with 
is just painting in the sides. And whilst that dries, I'm going to paint in the inside of that buckle, allowing the sides to dry just a fraction. And then cleaning off my brush, blotting it off as well. I'm just going to draw that colour into the middle. So we get a little bit of colour blend. And then we're going to paint the hat itself. Now, there is of course black, which will be a colour that gets used quite a lot today, but I also want to talk to you about the other options you can use um, when you're painting lots of very dark things, you don't always need to use pure black. You can make wonderful ranges of grey by using brown and blue. And I either choose burnt sienna and Prussian blue, which is what I'm making up right here, which gives you an ever so slightly sort of greeny tone to it, or burnt sienna and French ultramarine, which gives a slightly sort of more slate blue, grey kind of colour. And then you can always just add in a bit of black, but you just know that the colour has a little bit more to it. Right, so I'm going to start with an outline. both sides. And then with my wet brush, it's clean, I'm going to start drawing in the colour on either side. I'll come in for a little bit more. Because I let that purple dry just a little bit. It's not seeping up into the darkness of the witch's hat. So by doing this outline, then cleaning off your brush and blotting your brush off, you don't want it soaking wet because there's a lot of moisture already on the page. That looks lovely. And then we can do the brim as well. A little bit of a wobbly brim, lovely. Bring it back in. You have to work relatively swiftly to make sure that you don't lose that lovely blended edge. Because the joy of doing miniature watercolour means you're usually using miniature brushes which cannot hold as much water as their bigger counterparts which means that even if you're using quite a wet consistency of paint the likelihood is it will dry off fairly quickly. That's looking nice. Let's move on to our ghost. Now of course our ghost doesn't have a huge amount of colour to him but he does need a little something to stand out. So we're going to get a little bit more of the Prussian blue. I think he's got a got a bluey feel, our ghost. With a clean, uh, not clean wet brush, it's got colour on it. Uh, a large brush, size four, this one. I am just going to give my ghost the littlest bit of shaping. Not too much now. Need to make sure he gives people a fright. Oh, 
and we'll let him dry and then we'll fill in his details. Oh, now this one, we need to pop in lots of treats into our cauldron. So the first thing we do is work out what kind of stuff is going to be sort of scattered around on the ground in front of our cauldron. So this candy corn is going to be my main thing, but I will have a few lollipops in there, I think. And maybe, I don't know why, a few eyeballs. That seems like a fun thing. Another big lollipop. Okay, this is probably gonna be the, the time consuming one. So candy corn, if I know it right, which I don't know it that well, has a yellow base. And then has an orange middle. And I guess it looks a bit like a piece of corn, doesn't it? Let's get our cadmium yellows there and then we can pop in cadmium orange. It can blend a little bit and that's okay. And then we're gonna have some eyeballs. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint a sort of iris on, on the ball. So delightful, isn't it? Um, there's one more in there. Lovely. And we are going to also put in a pale wash on our lollipops so that we can do some more detail on those. So essentially, I'm working my way along at the moment, just painting in light basic washes, which can then be built upon in the next round coming around again. Time for our cat. So I am gonna do this one all in pure Mars black and I am going to start by using the wetness of the black to shape the various contours of the cat's body. So I'm going to start with these front paws and use, like I said, the wetness here. To create These velvety black paws. And then whilst that's drying, we'll come up and work a little bit on the head. I didn't put in a second ear, but there it is. So I'm just outlining. sure I don't paint the eye. So that I can paint in the rest. Okay. 
Okay, now this will have dried a little bit, we can start to put this shape in. This cat might be a little bit portly, but I think he's had quite a few treats from the trick or treat bin. Possibly a fish bone or a little mouse. And then a lovely curly tail. That we then thicken out. Just fill in the middle here. And we can finish her off, or him off, when we go back round and do all these. Right, pumpkin time. So, like I said, we do already have a pumpkin tutorial for you. Um, but it did not have a face in it, so I am just finding the sections of pumpkin here with a fairly wet brush and a sort of quite concentrate amount of colour, but then clean that brush off, dab it off a little bit and then maybe a little bit more water on it. and start to draw in the colour from the sides. This might take a little bit of practice if you are going more cautiously around your pumpkin edge that the paint might have dried by the time you've done it. That's not a problem. If you do find that, then just grab a little bit more paint and blend it in to the wetness. Just like that. and we'll complete the rest of these shapes and then we'll let it dry and we'll come back and get on with some detail. Everything is ready for a bit of detail now so I'm going to go back to my witch's hat and just start adding just a few simple little ruffles really I don't want them to be too overtly pronounced so I'm using the sort of slightly concentrated version of the shadow mix I used on the hat itself And then I'm just going to blend it in a little bit. And then for the belt buckle, a little bit more detail, which we again will just soften on that inside edge. And I'll use a little bit of yellow ochre for the belt buckle. And we'll do a tiny bit more shadow on that belt buckle once it's dry. Okay, time for our ghost. Time to give him his truly scary mouth and eyes.
I find it easiest to do an outline first and then fill it in with what you've got. Okay. When we rub out the pencil, we'll be able to see a lovely sort of crisp edge. But it's also cool to just give them a little bit, a little bit more. Right, so I filled in my, corn, uh, my cauldron in the same way that I did the cat. So we use the black at the edges and then blend it in with just as little water as possible, but just sort of softening those edges. So the first thing I want to do is to give my lollipops a pinwheel. So I'm using a more concentrated version of the Alizarin Crimson. I'm just letting it spiral out to the edges. Sometimes it's hard to do the spiral completely in one go unless your brush is really vertical like this. There's no shame in just sort of filling it in afterwards. And then I can just blend that in around the top. Lovely. Oh, I really want to go trick-or-treating. I never really did it as a child and in fact we were saying we missed a trick by not me not dressing up when I was doing the intro so I do apologize everyone right lovely they look suitably sort of bloody and gory um, now for our eyeballs and our candy corn they all need just a little bit of shadow for when we rub out the pencil. So this is just a very small amount. Then we need to put a pupil in the dot of those eyeball gobstoppers. <laughs> and we will revisit that cauldron once again when we're coming round for the next round. Um, our cat is very nearly done. She could do with some whiskers. So just using thin brush you can just do a few in the silhouette there and then a little bit of yellow for the eye and we will add in an iris and a pupil for her. Okay, so pumpkin time. Um, now this pumpkin is going to be glowing inside. So I'm going to start by doing a sort of yellow in a sort of central glow of yellow that is then going to blend to darkness because I want there to be something a bit menacing about this pumpkin. So I've done yellow if you can sort of imagine the candle in the center and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my shadow mix and I am going to come in from the edges and then clean the brush off and then just 
draw that colour in to the yellow so we get a bit of a blend. lovely and then I want to just add a little bit more orange to did I say pineapple earlier I've just suddenly got a thought did I wonder if I said pineapple I definitely meant pumpkin if I said pineapple dearie me I'm losing my mind there we go just a little bit more roundness Okay, that's looking good. We just need one more round of detail and then we'll be done. The final round. So just little bits now. Giving these tiny dashes of detail to the belt buckle there. Just really help with crisping everything up. And then we'll do a tiny bit of shadow not too much and of course our ghost well he's floating I don't even know if he'd have any shadow to be honest but he's got some right pump uh, pumpkin no cauldron that's what we're doing we need to do a few bits and pieces on this so first off I want to create just a tiny bit more detail on the cauldron and we need to put in the handle A little bit more definition on the candy corn. And then I'm adding just a tiny bit more gore, a few little bloodshot veins on these eyes, just very, very subtle. And then a bit of an extra swell on these lollipops. to fill in that lollipop stick just there and that was easy enough to do because of leaving a little bit of unpainted space and then we want a little bit of shadow underneath all of this sat like that and we'll give a little iris and maybe just a little bit more definition on those 
on those paws. And finally, my pumpkin. Just want a little bit extra detail on the bottom edge of these carvings. And finally, a little bit of shadow. And there we have it. Five little illustrations for Halloween. Thanks so much for watching. I really look forward to seeing all those witches' cats and hats and cauldrons adorning your journals and sketchbooks. Um, I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support, because your support enables me to make videos like this that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed the video, then please let me know by hitting the like button and comment below to let me know what you would like to see me painting next. And if you subscribe, of course, you'll never miss another video. Thanks again and I'll see you again soon. Bye!